Today in Trekking Through Compliance, we take up perhaps the most beloved episode of all time, City on the Edge of Forever. Compliance, the final frontier. Tom Fox is the voyager of Trekking Through Compliance. His mission? To explore the original series and seek out and share what it can teach you about compliance. Here's your host, Tom Fox. City on the Edge of Forever. Today we take up the most beloved episode in in Star Trek, the original series, City on the Edge of Forever, which aired on April 6, 1967, and occurred on Stardate 3134. After the Enterprise investigates ripples in time, which are the results of spatial disturbances, Sulu has a heart flutter after his control panel short circuits. Bones gives Sulu... Cordrazine, a mind-blowing drug at high doses, but a valuable cardiac medicine in small dosage. Sulu immediately recovers, but McCoy accidentally injects himself with the remainder of the cordrazine, cordrazine in the hypo when the Enterprise passes through a particularly strong spatial disturbance. McCoy freaks out and becomes extremely paranoid, knocking out the transporter chief and beaming down the planet to the planet to escape the ship of murderers. The transporter has been locked in on the center of the time ripples, and when Kirk, Spock, and the landing party follow McCoy down, they discover 10,000-year-old ruins surrounding the annulus-shaped structure from which the time distortions are emanating. The structure talks with the landing party, identifying itself as the guardian of forever, and is apparently a time portal. Spock finds the crazed McCoy and nerve pinches him, but McCoy recovers and rushes through the portal before anyone can stop him. Communication with the Enterprise immediately ceases and the landing party concludes that McCoy's actions have changed the past, affecting the present. To return to the present to what it was, Spock and Kirk enter the time portal at a time shortly before McCoy did so that they may find McCoy and prevent him from changing history. They materialize in America during the 1930s Depression and are forced to steal clothes so as not to draw attention to themselves. When questioned by a policeman, Kirk explained Spock ears by claiming that Spock was caught in a mechanical rice picker as a child. After escaping and hiding in what they think is a deserted building, they meet Edith Keeler, who was played by Jones Collins, guiding light of the 21st Street mission. They agree to do odd jobs for her to obtain funds necessary for Spock to construct a mnemonic memory circuit to read the information in the tricorder and discover what historical events McCoy has changed. They discover that Keeler is the link, either dying in a traffic accident or meeting with the U.S. president. Unbeknownst to Kirk and Spock, Bones appears and is given shelter at Edith's mission. After his arrival, he accosts a man on the street and then falls down unconscious. The man then accidentally vaporizes himself with McCoy's phaser. McCoy recovers from the quarters on trip and tells Edith he is a chief medical officer on the USS Enterprise. Initially, he does not believe he is 1930s America, but he soon realizes that he is. After hours of careful work using primitive vacuum tube circuits, Spock discovers that McCoy, if not stopped, will prevent Keeler's death. Keeler will then found a peace movement which will delay the U.S. entry into World War II and allow Germany to develop the atom bomb and conquer the world. On his way to see a Clark Gable movie with Edith, Kirk learns from Edith that McCoy is in town and immediately sees Bones across the street. Despite his love for Edith Keeler, Kirk holds Bones back to prevent him from saving Keeler as he crosses the street and as she crosses the street in front of a truck. The past is returned to what it has been. Kirk, Spock, and McCoy return to the planet of the Guardian where their landing party has been waiting, but only for a few seconds of real time. Communications with the Enterprise is restored, and the Guardian asks if anyone desires to make a journey in time. Kirk responds, let's get the hell out of here. Fun fact. Well, this is my personal favorite episode. I cannot watch it enough. Two of the greatest lines of all Star Trek, uh, in my mind, come out of this episode. From Spock, Edith Keeler must die. And then from Kirk, let's get the hell out of here. Um, but there's one other really interesting fact about this particular episode. It was credited to the uh, well-known and well-renowned 
science fiction writer Harlan Ellison. However, his uh, screenplay that he turned in was not the screenplay that was used for the episode. Nevertheless, Ellison was credited for the screenplay on this, and he uh, won a uh, a Hugo Award for it. Uh, The eventual script was written on, worked on, rewritten by Gene Roddenberry, Dorothy Dorothy or D.C. Fontana, and Bob Jessman, although none of them received credit. Turns out there are multiple compliance lessons from the city on the edge of forever. Number one, importance of strict policy enforcement. This episode highlights the dangers of attempting to circumvent or deviate from established protocols and procedures. Doesn't mean you can't, but it does mean you have to have a valid and good business reason for doing so. When McCoy accidentally alters the past through the Guardian of Forever, it leads to catastrophic changes in the timeline that the Enterprise crew must work to correct. This underscores the need for critical uh, need for strict policy enforcement and um, demonstrates what can happen if you have a non-business related shortcut or exception. Number two, balancing adherence to the rules with ethical considerations. While the crew must ultimately restore the original timeline, they are confronted with a difficult ethical dilemma of allowing a noble, selfless act to be undone. This highlights the delicate balance that compliance professionals must strike between rigidly upholding organizational policies and procedures and considering the moral and ethical implications of those policies. Number three, promoting transparency and accountability. The episode suggests that the guardian of forever's powers have been closely guarded and existence kept secret. This lack of transparency and open communication can enable the misuse of powerful technologies or tools. Compliance professionals should advocate for robust systems of transparency and accountability to prevent such risks. Number four, developing comprehensive risk mitigation strategies. The unexpected and catastrophic consequences of McCoy's actions underscore the importance of comprehensive risk management strategies. Compliance teams should work to anticipate a wide range of potential risks, both foreseeable and unforeseeable, and implement proactive measures to prevent or mitigate them. Number five, fostering a culture of ethical decision-making. The crew's difficult choice to allow Edith Keeler's sacrifice to be erased despite the personal cost, demonstrates the importance of cultivating a culture of ethical decision-making. When compliance professionals should empower employees at all levels to consider the moral and ethical implications of their actions and prioritize principled decision-making. Number six, empowering employee concerns, employees to raise concerns. Obviously, whistleblowing and speak up is critical, and this episode suggests McCoy's actions may have been driven by his compassion and desire to save a life. Compliance teams should create an environment where employees feel safe and empowered to raise concerns about potential ethical dilemmas without fear of retaliation or punishment. By applying these compliance lessons from the city on the edge of forever, compliance professionals can help their organizations develop a more robust, transparent, an ethically grounded compliance framework that supports sustainable and responsible business practices on a go-forward basis. A year of Star Trek by looking at the episode Operation Annihilate. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, you can help it grow by sharing it with the biggest Trek fan you know. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.